Welcome back YouTube. This is Dave Lucas with Injection Molding Skills and more. Today we're going to go over a viscosity curve. Try to say that a bunch of times fast. <laughs> okay, so what we're going to do is this video is going to actually show you what a, vis what a viscosity curve is and how it's used and then we'll plot it out to show you exa exactly what you're supposed to be using for your injection speed on your press so you're not going too fast or too slow. So this this uh, data sheet will help you out with that quite a bit. So I'm gonna show you some things on the whiteboard that'll actually help you out, okay? So on here, you it shows effects of injection speed on viscosity, shows the most consistent region of viscosity, reduced lot-to-lot -lot variation, may not be applicable in insert molded components, Fast injection speed may cause material degradation and burning. Um, injection, injection as fast as you need to, not as fast as you can. Slower speeds can perfectly be acceptable, okay? Um, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna show the viscosity curve, show like your set points for your injection speed going across and how it affects the pressure. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over this graph right here, okay? So. What it is, is on here, it tells you the purpose of this uh, test is to determine optimization injection viscosity for a particular material, mold, or design. This data sheet can be used to provide graphical re responsation of molecule alignment or orientation in a fast or a faster a plastic moves in injected or the most aligned oriented for the molecules, okay? So, it's a lot to put out. Blah, 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 blah. So, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over this data sheet with you guys, show you how to plot it, and show you how what steps to go to to get what you're looking for, because you're gonna start off with a slow speed and work your way down, and you're gonna do like 15 different variables all the way across, and you're gonna do your fill time, your pressure, and everything, and then that'll tell you exactly how fast to fill your part at, okay? So watch this little clip, and then I'll get back with you on the whiteboard and show you a little bit more, okay? The purpose of the in-mold rheology test is to determine the optimal filling rate based on the material's properties and the molding machine's capabilities. Rheology, as defined by Merriam-Webster, is a science dealing with the deformation and flow of matter. A polymer's resistance to flow is known as its viscosity, and the rate at which the polymer flows is referred to as its shear rate. As the shear rate, or flow rate, of the polymer increases, the viscosity decreases. This rheological behavior is unique to polymers and is called shear thinning. When graphing this, viscosity is plotted on the vertical y-axis, and the shear rate is plotted on the horizontal x-axis. Shear thinning will appear as a steep decline in the viscosity of the polymer as the shear rate increases. Once most of the shear thinning occurs, the polymer's viscosity starts to level out. After this point, the viscosity will remain relatively consistent, resulting in a more stable process. For this reason, you should process on the right-hand side of the curve. The objective of this test is to generate a shear rate curve similar to this for your own process. By doing so, you'll be able to identify where the viscosity has leveled out and then choose an appropriate fill time to create a more consistent and reliable process. Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed that little clip I put in place that shows you the viscosity curve a little bit. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over this here a little bit. So. What I wanted to do is, I don't know if you could really see this or not. So it says, load the tool, begin to attempt the procedure of filling the full parts. Once you once the parts are part is filled out, it is time to begin collecting data. The fill time and uh, pressure at transfer will be the only inputs obtained for this machine display. The machine setting this velocity will be the only setting that, you, that you'll be operating or changing, okay? Uh, begin adjusting just the injection velocity 
in normal increments. Record the fill time and pressure at transfer for every adjustment. Repeat this for 15 steps. Once you have a ha, once a curve has been created, pick a location on the curve beginning at break point. Okay, so there's a break. Adjust the points to the a few settings. Okay, accommodated change in material viscosity. Okay, so what they're saying is like yo, this will be like the chart that you have. Okay, on this chart you'll start off with. Let's say you start off with one and then one would be 0.5 on your speed. The next one would be 0.7 on your speed, 0.9 on your speed, uh, 1.1, 1.3, you know, and then you just keep on going up all the way up like this. Okay, guys, I hope you enjoyed until that Until you get to the top and then you're filling in here your fill the time. So, curve a little you know, bit. So the, what we're going to do is we're going to go over the, this here a little slower bit. Slower so the speed is, the what I longer your time is going to be. So this might be four seconds. This or not. The next one so might be. It says load the tool. Uh, three begin to attempt seconds, the procedure. Three point, fill in the full parts. Uh, once you once six, the parts five, are, you know, part keep going down. You're going to create the pressure. Here is what you're going to write down the pressure too. So the fill time and the fill time pressure at transfer will be the So let's say it's obtained for this slower the speed. The transfer position is going to be a lot higher. So you might be at like twenty thousand here or something. Will be the yeah, only or, setting yeah, that you twenty thousand. You'll be operating the next one, or change it. Okay. Fifteen. Uh, begin I mean, yeah. adjusting. Fifteen. Just the injection uh, velocity. You know, and then it might drop off more, increments. like down Record to fourteen. Fill time and down pressure to at eleven something. For every adjustment. But what you're looking for Repeat is you're looking this for, for your fifteen curve. steps. You're going once to work on this side a, of the curves. Ha, once a curve has been created, pick a location on the curve beginning at break point. Okay, so there's a break. Adjust the points to the a few settings, okay? Accommodated change in material viscosity, okay? So what they're saying is like, yo, this will be like the chart that you have, okay? On this chart, you'll start off with, let's say you start off with one and then one would be 0.5 on your speed. The next one would be 0.7 on your speed, 0.9 on your speed, 1.1, uh, 1.3 you know and then you just keep on going up all the way up like this until you get to the top and then you're filling in here your fill time so you know the the the, the slower the speed is the longer your time is going to be so this might be four seconds the next one might be uh 3.8 seconds 3. Point, um, six five you know keep going down then you're going to create the pressure here's what you're going to write down the pressure too so you're going to have the speed the fill time the pressure at transfer so let's say the slower the speed the transfer position is going to be a lot higher so you might be at like twenty thousand here or something or yeah at twenty thousand then the next one you might be at 15 i mean yeah 15 uh you know, and then it might drop off more, like down to 13, then down to 11 something. But what you're looking for is you're looking for your curve. You're going to work on this side of the curve. Sorry, my camera shut off again. But what you want is you want to work from this side of the curve. You don't ever want to go in real slow and have your pressures be peaked out. You want your speed to be pretty level all the way across until it starts to break. As soon as it starts to break, that's where you want your position to be actually for your speed you don't want to be like going ripping it in there real fast let's say your your speed's only supposed to be at, at uh 0.9 inches per second you can go to one inch per second probably and be in this range so you could probably be from 0.9 to let's say you're right in this area so you could be 0.9 to 1.10 and still fill the part good and still be within this range here on your pressure you know so just something to think about. I mean, I know I'm not the best at doing vis viscosity curves. The majority of the time I put the speed at the max and then work my way down from there. I usually I try to get it in a range like this because if you go way too fast, you're gonna flash out your part, you're gonna blow your mold open and stuff. So I hope this helps you guys out a little bit on viscosity curve. They do call it a rheology test too. I think they're both about the same. I've heard both of them be called that. So just uh, see what you guys think. Give me your comments if you like it or not. Um, 
I understand I'm not the best at doing this one, but a viscosity curve just tells you how fast you can shoot in and makes your pressure come down so you're not so high. So if you fill in slow, your pressure is going to be high. The faster you shoot in, the slower the molecules all orient, the pressure is going to drop, okay? So please like, share, and subscribe. Till next time. Oh yeah, forgot to tell you guys. Bill's Mafia. Woo! Peace.